Greetings, friends. Uh, this is Pastor Paul Tusky, and I'm coming to you from Florida with my dear friend, Pastor Derek, who shepherds a primarily millennial church called U Church in Lake Mary, Florida. And I'm going to pose a couple of questions to Derek here to uh, search his mind for uh, wisdom and, and understanding for me, you know, and maybe for you too. You know, I'm a baby boomer. You know, I was born before there were dinosaurs and or it seems like that now. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ministering to a large group of, of you who are millennials, and I'm going to pick Derek's brain here a little bit about some of the draws that the millennials have towards certain things. You know, I grew up with this. It's called the Bible. You know, it's, it's printed. Uh, this is a version I really like. In fact, it's a thin Bible, as you can see, and it's both the Old and New Testament. And I've taken this all over the world with me. It's the new King James Version, which does away with all the ye's and these and those things. But I like this Bible, and uh, I lost it for two years. And I just found it recently in my wife's closet, of all places. And when I went back and started looking, I have notes back here all the way to 2003. So uh, anyway, it was a dear friend. But this is my Bible. And I know many of you uh, find your Bible on this thing, the iPhone. You know, and in fact, uh, the other day I was in a restaurant, and I was eating breakfast by myself in like a diner. And I looked over the table and there was a dad with three of his children. They were all young, probably, you know, 10, 11, 12 year old. And all four of them, the entire meal had their face in, in the iPhone, all of them, the dad included. And so I watched them eat their meal, not saying anything to each other, but, you know, primarily just doing their little iPhone uh, search or whatever. So my question to you is, uh, <clears throat> how can I as an old guy benefit from this in, in reaching out to, to people or, or is it am I beyond repair in that area? No, I think I think honestly you do a really good job uh, using social media uh, to, to advance the gospel. I think anything in the world has a, uh, a, a use for good and yeah. a use for evil and I think um, self-control is huge for people that if you don't have it obviously you're going to be able to be persuaded to use it for evil. But I think you use it very well for, for getting the gospel out, for sharing things, for getting good news out. And I think that's the way that you can redeem anything that the enemy wants to use for evil for good. You know, I started this social media ministry in January 2020 and, and from scratch. We really had nobody and now it's got several thousand followers on mm -hmm. Facebook. And it's Paul Teske Ministries on Facebook. Go there. And also uh, through eBlast. But... I've also realized that it's a way of reaching the world. I mean, we're going to, right now, we, we think we're going to hit 2 million people in 2021. And we have a growing number of people in Pakistan and Afghanistan and, and Vietnam. And so, my, and, and many of those people are in the millennial group or, or in the next group above that. But what would be some of the messages that people in that age group, your age group, would be interested in hearing about, you know, and solutions of, to problems in their lives? I think the, the biggest thing that's resonated with me, and, and before we started U Church, we, we were a college ministry. We had a college ministry up in, in Volusia County, right next to a college, Stetson College, uh, up there in, in DeLand. And all we started doing was just talking about a personal relationship with Christ. And I think the biggest issue for people of my age, you know, back in the day, the, the uh, I think it's Gen X was taking, Gen X and, and boomers were taking their kids to church against their will. <laughs> I remember I was going to church all the time. You know, we would go to churches that were hours away. And I'm like, we passed 15 churches. Why can't we go to any of those? Why do we have to go? And we were always dragged to church. And, and so I, I always looked at church as something that we had to do. Right. And, and, and the millennials, there is a good group amount of people where that's how their background is. You talk to any uh, um, a lot of them. And yeah, I, I used to go to church and then now they're old enough to make that own decision. They don't go. And so when we started that college ministry, all we started doing was talking about that. that Jesus loves you and wants a relationship with you. He's not one in there to slap your wrist when you do something wrong. He wants to, like, be your loving father. And, and that just like went over their heads yeah. at the first couple of times because it didn't line up with anything they've ever heard. And so I think just preaching the unmixed gospel, just like flat out, here's the love of Jesus as he wants to do. It's not hear this, add this, add to this, let's make it better, let's spice it up. Just, just, the, just the gospel of Jesus Christ transforms everybody. 
And, and, and that's what this generation needs. I, I think if they can get to a point in their lives where the gospel is enough and Jesus is enough, that no matter what they go through, like, they don't need a topical message. They just need more of Jesus. Yeah. That's going to change their life. You know, it's interesting. I read a devotional every day called uh, Utmost, or My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. Do you know about him? I've heard about yeah. it, yeah. He's, you know, he was born, I think, in the 1800s and died in 1917. But this age-old devotional that's 365 days a year, you know, speaks loudly to me. And he made a comment in one of them. He said, if you don't preach the gospel, which is Jesus Christ crucified and risen, mm -hmm. you have no message. Correct. And he said, churches today are, are telling all kinds of stories and talking about everything else but Jesus Christ crucified and risen. Yeah. And then he made an interesting comment. He said, if you preach Jesus Christ crucified and risen to a sleeping church, people will get saved because yeah. that's the power of God unto salvation. And it comes right out of Romans chapter 1. It says, that, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God unto salvation. So you're right. I mean, proclaiming the gospel is going to change lives, and we don't have to dress it up. Just, no. you know, it's like the gospel is the gospel. So, going back to you and your parents dragging you to church and sometimes, you know, for miles on end, how did you end up becoming a minister in spite of all that torture and torment? <laughs> well, I, a lot of forgiveness. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, so I say drag me to church, but I also say that it was the best thing that ever could have happened, and if you've got to get your kids in front of uh, the Word of God any way possible, while you still have the ability to, to shepherd your kids, whether at home or whatever, you, you got to do it because, you know, the Bible talks about when that stuff gets in you, it doesn't, it doesn't ever return void. It's, it, it gets in you whether you are consciously downloading it or not. It's getting in there. So, so at what point did you come to that conclusion that, you know what, this after all wasn't that bad. And, and by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing this full time so, as my profession. <laughs> oh, so, that's a transformation. It was because I, I, I honestly, it, at a youth group, someone prophesied over me that you're going to be a youth pastor. Huh. And, and, and what, I, right, at the time, what did that sound like to you? Uh, gibberish. Because I'm like, I don't like people and I don't like talking in front of people. No, <laughs> and I, so I'm like, I don't know how this is going to happen. It's God's sense of humor. Hey, right? And, and so I laughed, mm -hmm. but then... Um, when you start to hear something like that and you, you start to try to avoid it, but it's there at every mm -hmm. moment. Um, when we started that college ministry, it was, we were going to a small group. And then when we showed up, everybody was looking at us like, what are you going to teach us? And we're like, I, I was just coming to hang out. And you you want to hear from me? And then that started the growth. And then, and then when you started realizing that, man, this is what I'm going to dedicate my life for. And I don't care what I've got to do. Uh, you know, I work full time so that we can use the money of, for the church and grow the church while we're yeah. still growing. And, and I'm, I'm okay with it because you know what? I absolutely love yeah. being able to minister to the gospel of Christ to, to anybody who wants to hear it. Well, I want, I want you to hear this. He absolutely is sincere in this because I've known this young man for quite a while and watched him labor and his wife, Emily, uh, uh, tirelessly. Uh, for the kingdom, and they both have secular jobs that they, they work in addition to this, but they, they pour themselves into this ministry on a full-time basis. So, you know, it is a testament to, to parents that took their children to church thinking, you know, is anything good going to come out of this? And, hey, at the end of the day, you're, a, you're, a, uh, you're a, 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 a definition of the goodness that comes out of those uh, long and endless days when your parents must have been sweating and and, uh, you know, tireless, tirelessly uh, dragging you to those yeah. churches. But uh, you're the fruit, and, and the fruit is more fruit yet to come. But it's, it's an amazing thing. I, 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 when I'm driving in our car and I'm hearing my kids worship to songs in the back, or I'm hearing that there was a kid that got hurt and my, my son prayed for him on yeah. the playground, that's not stuff that I'm pouring into them on a regular basis. It's stuff that they're watching. It's stuff that they're learning at church. It's stuff that they're hearing. And, and they're, they've just, it's, it's coming out of them. And I think that's what happens. I think if you can get somebody, not necessarily to a church, but to a group of people who are doing life together, that are discipling each other, whether they're doing life together, which is the body of Christ. That's what church is. It's not this building. It's not three songs and a message. It's doing life together. And you get a group of people like that, it rubs off on you. And, and it rubs off on your kids. And that is the hope for the future is our kids got to get grounded. Because they're, the, our kids, the millennial kids, are going to be the ones that are faced with the decisions Amen. like you see in the end of the book. Amen. 
Well, listen, I hope this has been helpful to you. I mean, Derek's a fine man of God, and it's just a privilege to be able to sit down and have these discussions with you. And if you want to reach out to me and share your thoughts, hit the comment button or go to my Facebook at paultuskyministries.com. Give me a prayer request. I'll get back to you. Or go to YouTube, YouTube at Paul Tusky Ministries. There's a litany of teachings on there, testimonies and so on. And they're all there for you. So, friends, I hope that you've been blessed. Uh, go in peace and serve the Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.